Yeah, uh, my subject is uh, Sir Roland Hill's postal reform and the Penny Black, based on the origin of the Penny Black. And uh, in today's presentation, I would like to talk about the following topics. First, brief introduction to the to my book, The Origin of the Penny Black, and uh, second, Roland Hill's postal reform, and then stepfather, Sir Roland Hill, and the fourth, Penny Black, the world's first postage stamp. So first, let me uh, introduce my book uh, a little bit first. And uh, the book entitled The Origin of the Penny Black was published in China in October 2015. And of course, uh, during uh, my writing the book, I obtained uh, much help from all different friends and from uh, all different countries, uh, such as uh, 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 Alan uh, Holyoke, the Penny Black expert, is also RDP, our royal member, our royal fellow, uh, and the Michael Chipfield and uh, Michael Safi from uh, the Royal Collection, the former keeper of the Royal uh, Collection, and also uh, from some museums, uh, say a postal museum, uh, Douglas Muir, the keeper, and also uh, from Bruce Castle Museums. And especially, I would like to mention two uh, uh, Roland Hill's descendants here. One is uh, Mr. Yin David Hill, and uh, also Mrs. Judy Armson Hill. Judy is here now. And uh, in my book, I used two of their photos uh, they provided me. And uh, David, when he uh, sent me the photos, uh, he was already 88 years old. And uh, in October, he sent me the photo. And then a month later, he passed away. So I thought maybe the photo I used in my book was his uh, last photograph he had taken in his life. And uh, he sent me some emails and told me some useful information and especially mentioned to me about uh, uh, Roland Hill's great uh, pamphlet, famous pamphlet, The Postal Reform. And uh, he said, especially the second edition, uh, it mentioned the stamp. So let me wish uh, David, uh, wish you a happy life in the paradise. God bless you. So last one, uh, let me talk about uh, uh, my book. Okay, it uh, includes six chapters. Uh, first, a brief introduction to the Great Britain postal history before the Penny Black. Second, the Penny Black stamps. And the third, Penny Black inventor, Sir Roland Hill. And the fourth, the event, firms, stories, and other major figures in connection with the Penny Black stamps. Fifth chapter, commemorating Penny Black and Sir Roland Hill. And the last one, a few Penny Black experts, collectors, dealers, and their works and the collections. And that's the, that's the book. That's the book. And that's the uh, medal I received uh, during last few years. And uh, pretty side already mentioned earlier, so I didn't uh, repeat here again. All right. So that's a brief introduction about my book. Just like uh, pretty side uh, introduced. My book is the uh, first uh, Chinese book about Penny Black in the world now. 
uh, still only one in the world about Penny Black. But I think maybe uh, there will be another one this year because I'm writing another one now. Okay, next let me talk about uh, Sir Roland Hill's post reform. People may uh, ask why post reform was needed in 1830s, say before the Penny Black was born. So I give the uh, the following reasons, uh, seven reasons. So this uh, first one I say, because during that time, the postage was very expensive and unreasonable. And the second one is the postage was charged by sheets, by sheets of paper and the weight and the distance. So it's uh, too complicated and also too expensive. That's why ordinary people could not afford it to uh, send letters, for example. <clears throat> and uh, one single letter from London to Edinburgh cost 16.5 pence. Of course, this one I, I, I copied from the book, Post Office uh, uh, 50 years ago, page four. Uh, it is a, a book uh, written by uh, Roland Hill and his son, President Hill. And uh, if, for example, if you use envelope, and then, uh, or if you uh, if uh, you send a letter with two sheets of paper, that means the postage will be will double will be doubled. And uh, for example, during that time, okay. Uh, during that time, ordinary people, for example, farm laborers, okay, I can, farm laborers, yeah, here, oh, where, sorry. Farm, you see here, the farm laborers is only about 30 pounds per year, you know, the annual, the, the, the annual uh, salary. So you can imagine, Ordinary people each day is about something like uh, 19 pounds per day. So if you send one letter, it's already one uh, ordinary people's one day salary. And of course, if you double or if you send the three pages, that means, oh, it, you know, it will cost the ordinary people maybe a three days salary. So you can see how can they afford uh, to send a letter. So, that's why people, you can see this, this we call it uh, uh, cross-written letters. So people try to write the letter uh, horizon first and then maybe uh, vertical, you know, and of course it's very difficult to, uh, you know, to read. And in that case, they can save the money and save some, you know, save some, uh, the postage. And, uh, and also, uh, this is a very large letter sheet and uh, envelope comparison. It was made by Henry Cole. Henry Cole is uh, uh, Roland Hill's assistant later. And then you can see the large one is uh, something, uh, is uh, 35, inches by 23 inches and it is not uh, an is not over announced in weight so it's one page and uh, the mini envelope with the uh, letter inside the, the size is four po four inches by 2.5 inches i mean the letter but the envelope is only about four by 1.2 inches is very small. It's, a, it's, it's a like uh, it's a like uh, you know uh, smaller than name card, and uh, but you can see the large one is a one shaped letter. You know that's why they charge by single rate, and uh, the mini envelope with the letter inside because it's two pages. It it was charged by double rate. For example, during that time, for uh, 
you know, uh, for a letter uh, for about uh, 15 miles, you know, up to 15 miles, single rate, for example, 4D, four pence, right? And this one, this uh, mini one, will be charged by eight pence. So it's double than the large one. And uh, the large one is uh, in weight, it's about 86 times than the small one in weight. And in size, it is uh, over 80 oh, times okay. larger uh, uh, than the you. small one. So you can see mm. it is very, very, you know, unreasonable. Uh, I think maybe you have to mute, yeah? And, uh, I'm muted, muted. Yeah. So can you, can you see this? Can you, can you see this? And this one is the whole state of the Manoraji uh, letter state. It's uh, 12, 12 of them. Jack, yeah. Jack, when we, when we see, Jack, when we're seeing your screen, then we cannot also see your camera so easily. No? No. Right. Okay. I, to be honest, I should, I should see myself, but I cannot see myself. So, that one, you see that, uh, that yeah, very small. I put there? Yeah, very small. That one is uh, the, you know, the mini one, the size like that. And this is a whole shape. Is uh, something like uh, you know something like uh, you know the the big large sheet I showed you, and the last one. But of course, this folded. You know, I I, I don't like to open it because uh, it is uh, very fragile. So that's you can see that's the you know why it is not uh, it is not reasonable, right? How can you charge the mini smaller than the uh, you know than the name card double rate, and then the large one is about eighty times in size than the small one. <laughs> you, you charge by single rate. So from this you can see the unreasonable postage regulation during that time. And uh, another one is uh, reason is a franking privilege for MPs and of course some government officials from 1652. So uh, franking privilege, I think uh, uh, everybody knows, you know, the MPs just send letters uh, free of charge and they got some quarter, you know, and they can receive and they can send some letters free of charge. But uh, this franking privilege also caused abuse and corruption. And uh, for example, uh, in 1763, one people, one, one man counterfeited MPs signature for over 10,000 uh, covers in about five months time. So you can imagine, you know, uh, it costs a lot of money for the post office. And also some MPs, you know, they signed, uh, some, uh, signed their name on the letter sheets and then gave them to their relatives and uh, supporters to use. And then they can also enjoy a <laughs> franking privilege. So that's, uh, that's the letter is, uh, uh, Canterbury, uh, William William Canterbury. Uh, it's a uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, he sent and signed his name in 1830. And this gentleman, just here, this gentleman here, and uh, it was him. And together with another lord, went to the Kensington Palace on the. 20th June 1837 and informed Prince Victoria and told her that okay you became the queen now because your uncle passed away early this morning. So this is a very uh, 
very good uh, you know franking cover i think and also uh, from this drawing we can see a sketch here yeah? is also made by henry cole and uh, this is uh, you know edinburgh mail coach of uh, 2nd march 1838 and there are a few mail bags uh, on this coach, you can see one of them is a newspaper, 2,296 newspapers, and the weight is uh, 273 pounds, and uh, another franking letters, 484 pieces, uh, 47 pounds, and uh, another one is a puzzle of uh, uh, frank, uh, stamps, also go free. And only here, only here is the small bag, is the weight is 34 pounds and uh, only paid 93 pounds sterling. So only this whole lot, this whole mail coach only paid 93 pounds. All others went free. And uh, that's why the title they gave is a great weight and no price, little weight and all price. And this is a, a Harry Cole made reform for the uniform penny postage uh, campaign. And also uh, Roland Hill, he wrote uh, to praise uh, Harry Cole in his book by saying, and also the fourth reason is the postage collected because the postage collected that means sometimes it was refused by uh, uh, the receiver reason is the post office insufficient management so during that time the management was too complicated and the cost too much uh, labor you know is uh, not reasonable uh, and uh, the last uh, uh, such as Roland Hill yeah he uh, and his uh, supporters uh, you know uh, during about uh, a few years time uh, Think something like two and a half and the three years time together with some uh, his supporters, including Harry Cole and also uh, some MPs, including uh, Robert Wallace, uh, the chairman of the Select Committee on Postage in the Parliament. And the last reason I think is. Uh, the high postage blocked the economic development during that time because the uh, UK had got about but, uh, uh, had got about the high uh, techniques, you know, uh, such as uh, steam and. Uh, also, uh, we call it during that time, we call it a uh, uh, victorious uh, industrial revolution period. And but the, you know, the postage, high postage blocked uh, the development of the economy. So that's the reason why uh, we need post reform. So that's the lovely story uh, I said in the last uh, slide. A lovely story about Roland Hill's uh, help paying postage for a young woman. And this lovely story involved uh, three important people. Of course, Sir Roland Hill, and uh, this one is Camille Taylor Coleridge, is a poet, great poet during that time, philosopher, philosopher, and also this uh, lovely writer. Uh, Harriet Matino. And uh, the original story uh, like this. One day, uh, Coleridge, 
uh, worked in Lake District and uh, should be Caswick uh, District. And then he, he saw an uh, old woman to uh, refuse to pay a shilling postage to the postman. And then he helped uh, the, uh, the old lady to pay the postage. But when the uh, postman left and the old lady told him, oh, you should not pay because there's nothing in it. <laughs> the letter is empty, nothing in, inside. And the letter was from his son. And uh, they had agreement beforehand. And if his son was uh, well, and uh, shit, any letter inside. So, Roland Hill, about uh, a few years later, he used this lovely story. He used this lovely story in his uh, great pamphlet, uh, Postal Reform. Uh, and then another lady, uh, Harriet Martino, a great writer during that time, and also she was a very good friend of the Queen Victoria. She published a book entitled History of England during the Thirty Years' Peace, and uh, in 1850. Uh, that means 13 years after Roland Hill's uh, pamphlet was published in the, uh, the third edition. And then she mentioned this story, but she changed the key figure from Coleridge to Roland Hill. <laughs> and uh, also uh, it happened in the Lake District. And also they changed you know, the story like uh, uh, a woman, Roland Hill, a young man, Roland Hill, worked in Lake District and saw a woman uh, refused to pay postage, and then Roland Hill paid the postage. And then uh, the, uh, the woman told him, oh, you should not pay because of this letter, there's nothing inside. Same story, but just changed, uh, you know, the, 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 the figures, you know. And, uh, and that's, the, that's one. Of course, there is another edition, maybe uh, everybody heard, you know, for the time being. That means uh, uh, a young man, a young uh, headmaster, schoolmaster, uh, walked in North London, and then uh, he saw a young girl refuse to pay uh, postage. And uh, of course, this story, I think, uh, spread it everywhere in the world. Even now, you can see this lovely, lovely drawing. Uh, this is uh, from the Postal Museum's uh, uh, leaflet. Uh, it's uh, still the same story. Uh, but the real story is uh, Coleridge paid and, uh, for, a young, uh, for a woman. So from this story, we can see something wrong, right? Because the ordinary people could not afford to send a letter. That's why they have to try to think a way to avoid paying postage. And of course, to uh, think of a way to share, uh, you know, the enjoy the. <coughs> okay, that's the lovely story. And that's the Roland Hill's post reform, why we need post reform during that time. Okay, last one, and uh, I will. Uh, talk about uh, Stamp Father, Sir Roland Hill. And uh, just to give a brief introduction about uh, Sir Roland Hill. And uh, Roland Hill born uh, and died 1879, and he was born in Kinderminster, just near Birmingham. And uh, as young as 13, he worked in his family's school called Hazelwood School as a pupil teacher. Uh, that means uh, he studied uh, and at the same time he taught in the, in the school too. And then at the age of 23 in 1818, he helped uh, his father run the school, manage the school. And in 1827, uh, they opened a uh, London branch at Bruce Castle 
uh, Tottenham in North London. And then Roland Hill was a schoolmaster. He retired from a schoolmaster in 1833 and joined a South Australian Association in 1834. And a year later, he became secretary to the South Australian, oh, there's the wrong word, commission until 1839. And on the 16th September 1839, he started working in the treasury and to carry out his uh, uniform penny postage and of course including uh, designing the world's first postage stamp penny bank and in September 1842 he was uh, sacked by the Tory government and uh, there is another one then worked for London Brighton Railway and finally he worked as the chairman of the board in that company. 1846, he came back to the sector, uh, to be secretary to the postmaster general and continue his reform. And 1854, he finally became the boss of the post office uh, as a secretary to the post office. And then he continued his postal uh, reform in the post office. Say, 1857, uh, London postcode used. 1861, uh, Savings Bank opened. And in 1860, uh, Roland Hill was knighted by the Queen. So we call him Sir now. And then he died in 1879. And on 4th September 1879, uh, he was buried in Westminster Abbey. So that's a brief introduction about uh, Roland Hill. So uh, Roland Hill in his whole life, and I thought he had uh, three very uh, great inventions. Uh, during uh, his working in the school as a headmaster, uh, head teacher in 1822, they got public education. It's a very, very modern uh, education system. And then in 1833, he and his brother Edwin Hill invented rotary printing machine. Uh, and it is a very modern machine during that time. And then, of course, a very important one is a uniform penny postage. Uh, including, of course, Penny Black in 1840. And uh, he started his uh, post reform in 1826, uh, just to uh, you know, draw his attention to the post reform. And uh, in 1835, he formally began his post reform. In 1836, uh, Mr. Wallace. Robert Wallace, uh, MP, and I call him Roland Hill's great teacher. Uh, and he provided him with uh, a lot of information on postage reform. And in January 1837, a pamphlet named The Post Office Reform is Importance and uh, Practicability was is, uh, published. And uh, of course, uh, because of this, uh, publishing and it draw a great attention to the public and then uh, UK formed a select committee chaired by the Robert uh, by Robert Wallace and uh, then uh, investigated and uh, started with uh, you know to uh, examine the MPs uh, some uh, post office officials and uh, then of course in 1839 uh, Uniform Penny Postage Act was uh, passed by the Parliament and then in uh, September on 16th September 1839 the Treasury uh, employed uh, Roland Hill to work for them in charge of uh, carrying out uniform penny postage system. And of course, 
designing the world's first postage stamp, Penny Black, and uh, also Maradi Postal Stationery with his assistance. So the key points of uh, his reform is uh, to reduce postage, prepaid uniform postage rate charged by weight instead of distance and the sheet of paper, use stamps including uh, envelopes, letter sheets, labels. And uh, you can see this, this is a post office reform. This is the photograph was taken by uh, David Hill. I mentioned uh, Judy's uh, cousin. And uh, before he passed away, he sent me this uh, photograph uh, and, uh, for my book. Okay, so after about two and a half years, uh, more than two and a half years campaign and promotion, uh, on 29th July 1839, House of Commons finally passed a Penny Postage Act, that is a Penny Postage Act. And uh, on 9th August, uh, passed by House of Laws, and then on 17th August 1839, uh, Queen Victoria approved and the act received Queen Victoria's law. 5th December 1839 and 9th January 1840, uh, finally Uniform 40 post was introduced first. That means you can send a letter uh, not over half an ounce, you can pay only 4D, 4 pence, to anywhere in the UK, in the British Isles. And then on the 10th January 1840, uh, Roland Hill's plan was finally uh, introduced. That means uniform 1D post came into operation. So you can just pay one penny and then you can send a letter not over a half an ounce to anywhere in the UK and uh, that one the uniform penny postage we can say it is a milestone in the world postal uh, history and uh, of course uh, it is represented the beginning of the modern post system in the world we call uniform penny postage system, we can say it is a postal revolution. So next we talk about uh, Penny Black, the world's first postage stamp. And uh, I will talk about it in the following small uh, topics. And uh, that's, uh, that's the times uh, published uh, the Treasury Minute on the 6th uh, September 1839. So we talk about uh, uh, 1839 Treasury competition first. So on the 6th September 1839, Treasury Minute of 23rd August 1839 was published in the Times. Sorry, yeah, just uh, you see, this is the times. That's the that's the date. And then they invited uh, artists on the stamp designs usage, whatever, and to two, uh, something like two uh, a month later, yeah, more than a month later. 15th October 1839 uh, and they received uh, 2,600 designs and uh, suggestions and uh, as a result five people were awarded 100 pounds each to Benjamin Charlton, Harry Cole, Charles Whiting and uh, 50 pounds to James Bogardus and Francis Coffin for joint entry. 
and that's the uh, competition designs. This is this one, the top one is by James Chalmers. And you can see there is a looks like a date stamp during that time. It's uh, September 30th, 1839 with Dundee. And, uh, and this one is, uh, this one is uh, joint uh, entry by James and Francis. This one is by uh, James Chalmers, uh, oh sorry, Charles Whiting, sorry, sorry, Charles Whiting. And the Charles Whiting, he provided more than a hundred designs by using his uh, famous Congreve uh, printing method. And uh, this one is, uh, looks like a, you know, a uh, booklet here. Yeah? And I think maybe this is the initial designs uh, for the, the booklet, uh, booklet, right? And uh, this is the Queen's uh, collection. So that's one, how the stamp was designed. And uh, we can say, uh, I, I'm sorry, you know, there is a mark here because I think maybe I, I did it before and I didn't uh, clean it. Uh, can you hear me? I think it's a little bit noisy there. Okay, so uh, how the stand was designed? First, they use uh, the Queen's uh, visit, the, the, we call it the City Medal. You know, uh, this medal was engraved by William Wine, so we also call it uh, Wine's Medal. And uh, this, this medal uh, was to commemorate the Queen's first visit to the City Hall on 9th November 1837, uh, after her coronation. And uh, then another artist called Henry Corbett, he uh, made a drawing, uh, the Queen's hat, based on this uh, Wines medal. And then after that, uh, the engraver, uh, can you mute, please? Mr. Ashish Jain in Delhi, please will you mute your microphone, sir? Yeah. Can you, it's okay? Yeah. And then uh, this one is, uh, uh, we call it original dye. And uh, another two engravers, uh, we'd better say one first, Charles Heath. And uh, he uh, engraved the original dye based on Harry Cole's drawing. And of course, this drawing is from the Royal Collection. It's signed, uh, you know, probably the Harry Code, but I doubt it, it is not. Uh, you know, it marked here, it uh, engraved by wine. This one is uh, drawn by wine. And then, uh, because during that time, Charles Heath, the I. background, uh, we call it engine 10 background used for the penny black, just this part, background. And this is a four stages uh, for the engraving. First, uh, they just, you see this is a block of a steel, and then they uh, use a machine to, uh, uh, to, to do the background first, impress the background first, uh, leave the blank, uh, the, the queen's hat in blank, and then the engraver uh, uh, engraved the queen's hat, and then they put a postage and one penny uh, at the top and the bottom, and then they put the top corners uh, with the stars, uh, or we call it reds, and they leave the bottom two corners in blank first. Mm. And then they got this uh, original die finally. And uh, this uh, photo I took in Postal Museum. And then, because it's uh, very hard, yeah, this is very hard uh, still. 
So uh, in order to uh, engrave on it, so the, uh, the per uh, Perkins Bacon patch, the printer, they have got a, a special uh, technique to, they can make it uh, softer. And then the engraver can use the tool uh, to engrave it. And then after they engraved, they make it harder. And then from the uh, original die to transfer the impression of the uh, queen's head to the roller die. And then from roller die to the printing plate, the whole plate, uh, based on the whole plate, the number is 240. So they have to transfer the impressions uh, uh, onto the uh, plating plate. So to make up 240 pieces. So that's the whole plate, right? That's the whole plate. And then that's the, uh, that's the stamp. And uh, when they pr printed by using this whole plate, uh, uh, sorry, before, before, before printing, they have to use this uh, special machine, uh, this special tool, we call it the punch. Uh, and then to put this uh, two letters, we call it check letters at the bottom into the two corners at the bottom. So this this is uh, just for the you know for the uh, security reason to anti forgery. So that's the composition uh, of the penny black. I think maybe I don't know uh, the time. Maybe it's uh, I I didn't I didn't notice the time, and uh, so I just try to uh, quick go over it. I'm sorry for some mark there. Uh, the black one, I think maybe I did it yesterday and uh, and uh, I saved it. I'm sorry. So this is the competition, Hello, right? Yeah? Jack, you st yeah? You still got 10 15 minutes. Please go on. Uh, how many? 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, all right. Okay, in that case, all right, I will. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much because I. <laughs> okay, all right. And that's the uh, Penny Black's composition. And uh, of course, the main uh, design is Queen's Hat. And uh, the background we, call, we, we already said earlier, introduced, and it is, we call it Engine 10 designs. And also the top is with the words postage and the bottom is uh, uh, one penny. And the top two corners with, uh, with uh, you can see this, with, we call it stars or rays, right? And the four large rays and uh, 12 small uh, rays, or maybe we call it uh, clock hands. And then uh, at the bottom, we put two uh, different letters uh, for the forgery. And then the background is a small tron uh, watermark. And uh, based on the printing, we call it a printing error, or maybe we say is uh, flaws, and or maybe we say a re entry or retouched or double letters. And then we can see, uh, we can judge uh, the plate, which plate it is, or we call it just to say plating. For example, you see this? This is a seven o'clock, seven o'clock uh, floor, and then with the top frame broken, that means this uh, stand uh, should be plate 11. For example, if this one with the large ray inside is hollow, so that one, it's maybe it is a plate eight. And uh, also we can see this is, uh, we call it uh, all floors. Uh, you know, they got uh, three stages, the stage one, stage two, stage three. And uh, stage three, you can see almost look like uh, a Q, the letter Q. And based on this, uh, we know maybe that uh, should be, you know, played uh, eight or nine or, or ten or something. Okay, because, uh, uh, you know, the the plating is uh, too difficult, you know, and we don't talk about it. 
and if you like, you can you can see some uh, useful books. You know, that's uh, uh, guidelines to the penny black, guidelines to penny black, and also of course you can try to find some uh, uh, buy something. You know, like this. You know, uh, this is uh, all the all the penny black photograph and two thousand eight hundred eighty uh, different penny blacks. Okay. So that's one, uh, that's the uh, key people involved in designing uh, the stamps and the Maradi's postal stationery. Of course, we... Uh, talked, so we call Sir Lone Hill, or maybe we just call him uh, inventor of the Penny Blank, or we can call him a uh, team leader, is better. You know, because not only uh, he really uh, himself, you know, to design, to make a sketch or something, you know, but he led the whole team to do it. And uh, William Wine, that gentleman, you know, the Wines Medal, City Medal, and uh, he engraved. And then this gentleman, Harry Cobalt, this gentleman, and uh, he made a sketch of the Queen's hat. And then uh, Charles Heath, he engraved the original die, and this gentleman, of course, is William Maradi, and he designed the Maradi postal stationery. Uh, I don't know, 12, the whole sheets of 12 letter sheets earlier. And this uh, gentleman is uh, Harry Cole. And then, of course, uh, later, he was also knighted by the Queen. And this gentleman, maybe uh, not many people, uh, uh, knew his story very well, but uh, he is definitely a very, very famous uh, gentleman because uh, uh, if I mention a place, maybe you will know because uh, 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 Victoria and Albert Museum, okay, he was the first director of that uh, museum. Originally, they call it South Kensington Museum. And also this gentleman, uh, also uh, organized, uh, we can say, not uh, himself, okay, together with uh, Prince Albert, organized 1851 London Great Exhibition. And uh, I think uh, uh, in today's uh, title, I think maybe we can call him something like uh, Secretary General of the, uh, of the, you know, committee, organizing committee, something like that. And also this gentleman, also, he invented the world's first Christmas card, commercial Christmas card, this gentleman. And, uh, and you can see the original uh, drawing in the post, uh, in V&A Museum. And of course, in the Postal Museum, you can also see uh, the color one. And the last one is Edwin, Edwin Hill, and he, he was the uh, uh, Roland Hill's brother, elder brother, and uh, he was uh, introduced by Roland Hill, of course, worked in Somerset House. Uh, of course, we say Somerset his uh, real name should be a stamp office during that time. And then Edwin Hill was in charge of the uh, printing and the inspection. Uh, we call him uh, controller of the stamp. So during the printing the penny black, uh, Edwin Hill uh, often went to the uh, printer, uh, Perkins Bacon's uh, company, to check the quality and also uh, he keep the key for the safe. You know? And uh, because each day they have to put, you know, uh, the you know the uh, tool in the special. Uh, safe, you know, room in a safe room, and uh, he keep uh, one of them, uh, the key. So that's uh, I just to give a rough idea because uh, I haven't got time, too much time, I think left. And um, okay, that's uh, Penny Black finally. Uh, still, please mute your. Uh, okay, that's the uh, Penny Black. And uh, Penny Black used line engraving stamp production method. So we also call Penny Black 
uh, top in blue and the penny in red lying in great issues. So there are total 11 plates. And uh, of course, I think we should say 12 because plate one, we divided the plate A and uh, plate 1A and the plate 1B. And the plate 1A uh, is, uh, you know, uh, for the stamps by using the plate without hardening. And then very shortly it got worn, and then the repaired and uh, and hardened. So we call it plate one B. And there are total two thousand eight hundred and eighty different penny blacks, uh, just like I showed you. And uh, so that's all. Uh, eight uh, two thousand eight hundred. All right. And that's uh, the photograph, the real photograph uh, from the uh, book uh, Nissan, another famous dealer, uh, auctioner, printed, and that's the real one. And uh, during that time, over 68 million penny black, uh, penny black stamps uh, were printed. So a uh, huge, a uh, huge. And then, of course, at the same time, Another postal stationery, we call it um, already postal stationery, was born. And that's the, that's the one, that's the envelope. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, you can see this, in this area, there is Maradi, uh, the designer. And then uh, it was born same time. And uh, another one is, we call it We Are Penny Black. This one, we are penny black. Uh, you know, originally uh, it was suggested by Roland Hill just for the government use. But the problem is, uh, it was never issued, and it printed. Uh, it uh, it all uh, together printed about uh, uh, three thousand four hundred seventy one sheets, but one hundred and forty eight. Uh, shit uh, with the damaged and then da uh, destroyed. But the problem is, uh, it was never issued and sold. Uh, of course, not sold, not, never used, never used. So uh, it was destroyed uh, on 25th January 1843. Uh, the total shit left during that time is 3302, uh, the total sheets. And of course, uh, the destroy, uh, you know, these uh, stamps uh, was approved by Edwin Hill. Uh, I just to say uh, earlier, uh, mentioned earlier, is uh, Roland Hill's brother who controlled the printing and uh, he approved to destroy these uh, VR uh, stamps. So uh, at the same time, you know, we use Mountain's Cross and we call it the postmark, yeah, cancellation mark, uh, to cancel uh, the uh, stamps uh, and in order to avoid uh, to reuse the stamp. And uh, of course, you know, we don't to talk about too much. Uh, there is, uh, uh, there are a lot of books about postmarks and we can, we can, you can read uh, uh, by, you can read the books, you know. And of course, that's uh, uh, we, we, we say about uh, uh, the issuing date for the penny black. It was sold uh, on the 1st of May 1840, but it was not valid uh, as a postage until 6 May 1840. And that means uh, 6 May 1840, we call it official issuing date. And uh, we this is the uh, first uh, day cover. Of course, this is the royal, the Her Majesty the Queen's uh, collection. And that's a very famous, uh, we call it uh, uh, Kirkuber, uh, oh, very difficult to pronounce this, <laughs> you know, this uh, place. It's a very famous, we call it the uh, Ten Penny Black cover. And uh, I think it seems to me it's about in 2000. Uh, uh, the Queen uh, sold some of his collection, uh, her collections and then bought this uh, very famous one cost about during that time something like 200,000 pounds 
but uh, who knows uh, how much it, it, it was it is worth now I think maybe a million or two million a few million nobody knows because uh, in I don't think the queen will sell it and that's the that's the very famous uh, you know uh, tiny black used on the 2nd May 1840 because it was not valid as a postage that's why they have to pay uh, the postage and then they, they got a mark postmark postage paid okay rindo trials and uh, of course uh, everybody knows you know uh, later we changed the penny black to penny red why because uh, only a few days all in the hill received the letters uh, from you know some uh, some people and just told him that you know they could uh, clean uh, uh, the watermark uh, sorry sorry uh, 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 Mountain's cross postmark and then reuse the uh, the stamp again that's why uh, the uh, Roland Hill and his uh, uh, colleagues and uh, scientists, chemical scientists to do uh, the color and of course including uh, the colors of the penny black uh, and also uh, the Maltese cross colors uh, ink. <coughs> and uh, this experiment uh, took about uh, something like uh, almost a half year. <coughs> until uh, December and then they finally decided to change the color uh, from the black I mean the stamp penny black color from the black to red and of course uh, change the color of the consolation ink from the red to black <coughs> and then uh, on the 10th February 1841 Penny Red was born and of course uh, almost at the same time another uh, two pence blue uh, was born too and uh, should be in March and a little bit light color than before this one light blue color so this is a, a red penny red you know plate 10 so that's uh, what I want to talk and uh, then I just uh, give a, a conclusion. So Sir Roland Hill Sir Roland Hill, stepfather, inventor of uniform penny postage system, a postmaster general during Queen Victoria period called him the king of the post reform and uh, uniform penny postage system a milestone a modern post system representing the beginning of the modern post system in the world it is a great postal revolution and the penny black because of the penny black yeah and uh, it is the uh, world's first postage stamp and the many many countries follow suit and the second because of the penny black people started the hobby of stamp collecting and of course the philately promotes the friendship and the culture between different countries without considering the race skin color religion countries and the regions etc and because of the birth it promoted and speeded up both uk economy and the world economic development and uh, now the stamp is not only the postage certificate now but also has collection and uh, collection value and appreciation value and of course now the stamp is a national name card and a small encyclopedia you can learn everything through the small uh, stamp so i do hope that we will not forget sir Roland hill and his colleagues who invented this lovely stamp and uh, that's why led us to have the philately hobby 
and still we can gather here through Zoom for this hobby after 180 years birth of the penny black. Okay, thank you very much.